Chairs No Wedding, episode number 561, Merry Christmas to All, 2019. Two Chairs No Wedding is brought to you each week by the folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and check out some of the Christmas stuff they got over there. They got Andy Griffith Show Christmas specials. They have got Andy Griffith, the Christmas guest, full-length CD. They even have Jim Neighbors Christmas music over there. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of episode number 561 is Phil Barnard. Phil, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the show. Phil had uh, given me uh, a donation here to the podcast to be an executive producer, and uh, honestly, I'd I'd, uh, forgotten. (laughs) But he reminded me, and I want to thank you. If I have done that to anyone else, please let me know. I don't want to mean to do that. Hello, everybody. Who am I to be reminded? I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting. In this episode, we're going to be doing a Christmas episode. Now, we do these every year. I said say I do these every year. In the last couple of years, I think I have kind of done replays. So I played uh, reruns from previous years because it's pretty much uh, very similar episodes every year. But I wanted to do one because I hadn't done it in a little while. And I wanted to just pick out my music and play it and do it for you. Now, most of the things we're going to be hearing are things that I put it together. But there are there are a couple of exceptions. So I hope you'll stick around and see it. Uh, then we have a great uh, this week in Mayberry history from Randy Turner as well. So folks, it's a great episode. Hopefully you'll just enjoy it. This is something you can just, uh, listen to as you drive to your in-laws and your family and, uh, uh, everybody as you go throughout the Christmas season. I hope you will enjoy it. So folks, first off, I'm going to play, uh, this is our Christmas card for this year. So for those of you who are just listening, hopefully you'll enjoy the music and, and, and I will comment as we go through. But this is the Mayberry Christmas card video. So if you're watching the video version, you'll see it for 2019 from my family to you guys. So let's go ahead. Let's looky-loo and see who's setting with Thelma Lou Who. It's Ben the Grinch. And a pup named Blue, too. Ben the Grinch, with his heart much too small to be Santa Claus or to be jolly at all. But who can resist Thelma Lou Who with her kind, thoughtful heart and her eyes shining through? Her smile welcomed the Grinch, or maybe her warm, loving spirit. As she spoke to him, then the Grinch began to get it. The Mayberry spirit tugged at his heart as two sizes it grew. His chest swelled with love for the town and for Blue, too. Santa Claus is real, if you're a believer. If you still have doubts, just look to Ben Weaver. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. I hope you guys enjoy that. That is our Christmas card for 2019. And uh, I hope you enjoy that uh, as you listen there. Folks are calling in. They enjoyed it so much here on the phone. Uh, so... <laughs> So uh, this is uh, this is what we do every year. Show you some of these, and I've been making these Christmas cards for well since two thousand or no nineteen ninety two, and if you can all go out and check them out if you'd like to see all the old ones. I'll have a link in our show notes. It's called uh, Mayberry, the Ghost of Mayberry Christmas Past, the Ghost of Christmas Past, and you can go and check this out if you go to imayberry dot com slash christmas, and it'll take you to hear, see all the Christmas videos and everything that I've done over the years. So I hope you liked it. This year's, if you're just listening, is actually, it's Ben the Grinch. Now, I am no Dr. Seuss. I understand that. Uh, But it was Ben and Thelma Lou Who as well. So hopefully, uh, you know, if you get to watch the video, you'll be able to see it. So hopefully you enjoy that. Let's go now and hear from me again. By the way, I wrote the uh, lyrics uh, to that uh, Wonderful Dr. Seuss type thing. 
I'm not Dr. Seuss. And not only am I not Dr. Seuss, I'm not a singer. But we're going to go in here from the 2010 version of our card, which is Barney the Mayberry Deputy. You know Andy and Opie and Ellie and Aunt B. You know Warren and Goober and Gomer and Ernest T. But do you recall the most famous deputy of all? Barney the Mayberry deputy had a very shiny badge. And when he cleaned his bullet, he would use liquid pledge. All of the other deputies tried, but it just wasn't the same. They couldn't match old Barney. Tiger Fife was his name. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, and he came to say, Barney, with your build so right, won't you be our Santa tonight? My, how the folks there loved him. Andy, Opie, Ellie, and Aunt B. Barney, the Mayberry deputy. You'll go down in his story. Barney, the Mayberry deputy. You'll go down in his story. Merry Christmas to you and yours, and may the Lord keep you in his care. All right, folks, so that was the 2010 version, which, again, you can go and check these out yourself if you'd like to. and Listen to them all you like. They are there for you to enjoy. Now, in 2017, we had a great news report from Mayberry Tone News. Let's see how that one. Mayberry Tone News, 1960, Santa spotted at courthouse, concerns over weight loss, food all goes to muscle. Several citizens and children around Mayberry recently spotted a much slimmed down version of the jolly old elf who visits every home on the eve of Christmas. Spotted at the Mayberry Courthouse during the Christmas gathering, Santa was sporting a ill-fitting suit due to what seemed to be extreme weight loss. Sheriff Andy Taylor said he expressed concerns to Santa about his weight. Santa reportedly confirmed that while he had been eating as much as normal, none of it goes to fat. It all goes to muscle. Santa stated that it was the mark of the Claus family, quote, Everything goes to muscle. He further reported that his mother was the same way. Quote, it's like we have a clock in our stomach telling us it's time to eat. But it all goes to muscle. I'm working on getting into Christmas shape before the big day. But I really have to pack it away to get there. Lights broken around Mayberry. There's been a recent rash of broken lights used as Christmas decorations all around Mayberry. The sheriff's office is at a loss to identify a specific suspect that assures the Gazette they are on the case. Speaking on condition of anonymity, a sheriff's office employee told the Gazette this case is similar to vandalism of street lights seen when the apple crop was being harvested. That case involved local kids being negatively influenced by a new kid who had recently moved to town. The source said, I'm not saying he's responsible for the current spree, but then again, I'm not saying he isn't. Sheriff Taylor would not confirm the theory, but did say that rocks were being used to break the lights, so he is pretty sure for whom he's looking. Merchant packs bags for Christmas. Local merchant will be spending Christmas holiday as a resident of Mayberry County. 
After repeated offenses ranging from removal of the bench from the front of the courthouse, parking in front of a hydrant, and ripping up a ticket, the final straw was emptying trash cans onto the city streets. Sheriff Taylor was forced to take Mr. Weaver of Weaver's Department Store into custody. Sheriff Taylor was kind enough to allow Mr. Weaver to drop by his store and pack a few items for his holiday stay in jail. Mr. Weaver mistakenly packed several items of no use to him, including skates, a baseball mitt, a baby doll, perfume, a basket, and other items. Ben chose to make a gift of the mispacked items to those at the courthouse Christmas event. Not to worry, Weaver's is still open for your last-minute shopping. Ben left Miss Newsom in charge in his absence. one of my favorites Santa spotted the courthouse concerns over weight loss that was one of my favorites I really enjoyed doing that card and coming up with ways to make it sound like a movie tone news event uh, it was a lot of fun so uh, that's one like I said I, I just enjoyed that one a lot uh, Ben Weaver Ben Weaver <laughs> was in trouble uh, let's see so next up let's see that was 2000 and what uh, oh, 2006 is our next one. This one is one of Jan's favorites. Uh, this is mostly just music, so I'll be reading what the actual content is. Uh, for those of you who can't see it, the video is actually of my son and myself at Myers Lake in in Mayberry. It's actually in California, uh, walking to and from the fishing hole. Uh, while this music plays and these words are in the background. So let's hit check out the 2006 version of our online Christmas card. The Newsom's Pray. Christmas. Both are about family and friends. We hope that the road from the fishing hole leads everyone home to you safe and sound. We're heading home. Christmas, everybody. So that was my son and myself, and uh, it's a that's a that was a neat one for for us. All right, so that's uh, that's several things from us. I've got one that uh, I think you're really going to enjoy. This is uh, we've heard this before. This is from Charlie Monk, and he's uh, going to do Andy and Opie Christmas, and uh, I think it captures the same spirit as that last one does. So let's enjoy this. I was watching an old Andy Griffith show the other day and noticed how the people of Mayberry were celebrating Christmas. I got to thinking, what does Christmas really mean today? Is it any different now than it was in the small town where I grew up? Watching Andy and Opie did bring back some very special memories. You see, my hometown was a lot like Mayberry. My dad used to joke that we were so small that welcome to and hurry back was on the same sign. I think small towns were a lot different than the big cities, especially at Christmas time. For instance, all the stores waited until after Thanksgiving before they decorated for Christmas. When I was a kid, the town folks hung green garlands and striped candy canes from light poles. Even the red, yellow, and green of our one traffic light seemed to be part of the festive decor. 
I remember all the fancy flickering lights that were strung along the storefronts and the display windows that were filled with boxes wrapped as gifts and lots of stuffed Santas. We chopped down our own Christmas tree in the pasture nearby. We drug it home and helped Dad make our own stand. You know, we had so much fun when our grandparents helped us make multicolored paper chains and popcorn strings to put on the tree. Most of our ornaments, of course, were handmade at school or church. Our family only had one string of lights, but all the bulbs lit up every year. My mama made cakes, pies, and cookies, <laughs> and no matter what room you're in, there was that aroma of those soon-to-be-enjoyed goodies. We had eggnog, and there was the wonderful smell of spiced apple cider. That's the kind of stuff Aunt B would have made. Looking back, we didn't have much, but we didn't know it. Oh, we didn't have a fireplace, by the way, but Santa always found a way in. Church was the second home for small town folks, but at Christmas time, it became the focus. And every church had a Christmas play. Now, all the kids wanted to be Mary, Joseph, or the three wise men, <laughs> or a camel. Oh, it was just great fun. One of my favorite memories was when families gathered together, put on their warmest coats, caps, and mittens, and roamed the streets singing Christmas carols. Like Andy, Opie, and Barney most likely did, people in my hometown shared gifts and baskets of food with the neighbors that might not have as much as they did. Our sheriff even let some of the people we called guests of the county go home on Christmas Eve. But if my memory serves me, when I was young, the holiday season was really more about giving, not about getting, which made it more about doing for others than buying for others. You see, that was the small town way. And in my hometown, or any town like Mayberry, there seemed to be more emphasis on the reason for the season. Yes, we should remember the good times. The giving and receiving of gifts, the laughter, the merriment, but we should also stop and remember that we're celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Merry Christmas from me, Andy, and Opie. Wow, that's a great one. Great job, Charlie. Charlie Monk, uh, he gave me permission to play that for you guys, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we also got some permission to play a couple of others, and I think you're going to enjoy this. This is not Mayberry, but it's about as close as we can get and it not be Mayberry, and I think it's fun. So this is our friend that is Festus from Gunsmoke. And I hope you're going to like this. Uh, it was a night before Christmas. It was a night before Christmas. And out in the yard, there was a chicken a pecking on the ground pretty hard. Our stockings was hung at the long branch up high. In hopes that old Sandy Claus just might drop by. The young'uns was snuggled all tight in their beds cause they knew if they got out, they was a whooping ahead. I in my long johns and my mule in her jacket, we was jolted to wake by a terrible racket. I ran out the door and into the night with a gun in my hand, I was ready for a fight. But I tripped on a duck and she screamed out a quack. And right over yonder, fly down these bike, lay old Doc Adams out like a light. I ran up to him, I said, Doc, you all right? Not a peep, did he utter. That fidgety old scooter. Well, I leaned over close to him. See if his heart was still a ticket. 
but I, I couldn't hear nothing on account of that dead blame ground picking chicken. He popped open his eyeballs and jumped to his feet, said, get out of my way. And then he let out a, a bleat like a sheep. I asked him what for. He said it doesn't matter. Then, then I, I had to run back inside because I got a weak bladder. When I came back out, I couldn't believe my eyeballs. I said, what in the tarnation is that? Because I couldn't think of a rhyme for eyeballs. No, old Doc hopped up, up on his sleigh, overloaded with toys, pulled by eight puny sheep, making all kind of noise. I, I stuck my head in the water trough, way down deep, because I thought I might just still be asleep. Well, that old sawbones, he spit, whistled, and hollered, and he yelled out the names that was writ on they collars. He said, now Skeeter, now Elmer, now Jasper and Roscoe, on Cletus, on Wilbur, on Moses and Jethro. They took to pulling that sleigh hard up the hill. When they reached the top, they ran over Granny still. And she started to cussing and shooting at old Doc and his team, and, and I think she winged him because he let out this girly scream. He yelled at those sheep something fierce, I do declare, and, and all of a sudden, they was flying in the air. They landed on the house a fur piece up the road, so I jumped on my mule and up the road I go. We got to the house in about half a minute. I, I grabbed the front door, I pulled, and went in it. Now, inside, old Doc was working fast like a bee, putting toys in stockings and up under those trees. From his head to his toes, he was all dressed in red. Doc Adams is, is Sandy calls, I thought in my head. Well, he was a smiling and laughing, and he was all full of good cheer. He ain't usually like that, and this he had a whole lot of beer. And all of a sudden, when his work was all done, he was up through that chimney like being shot from a gun. He jumped in his sleigh and took off again in flight, hollering, Merry Christmas to all. And to Festus, in the head, you ain't right. <laughs> he just he just couldn't help himself and, and started that fight. But I just let it go. I let it go, I let it go, and said, well, it's all right. I walked my mule back to my one-room shack, and, and my heart was so full of joy and, and goodwill towards my fellow man, I, I stopped on the road, and I, and I just stood still, thinking that the uh, reason for Christmas ain't just toys and fun. The real reason is because God sent us his son, born to die on the cross for our sin, born in the stable because there weren't no room at the end. Believe in him and ask him into your heart and he'll make you bright, spanking new and give you a fresh start. Christmas happened because God loves everyone. And you can show your love for him by telling others about his son, Jesus. Uh, thank you. A Night Before Christmas by Mark Sags. It's Festus. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll have links to some of these things. Uh, Mark, uh, it's markstags.com if you'd like to get Festus at your event. And, hey, get Floyd there with him. Because, you know, on on uh, Gunsmoke, the radio show, Floyd was Doc. 
he played Doc. Howard McNear played Doc. So that's the connection. We got a connection. And Parley Bear was Chester. Uh, that's Mayor Stoner for all of us. Anyway, so that's uh, that. Gets, that's a little bit outside the Mayberry realm. So let's pull us back into the Mayberry realm with this one from Paul Sander for uh, Mayor, Mayberry Christmas. <laughs> was the night before Christmas and all through Mayberry, this year's Santa would become legendary. A picture from Otis was hung up with care by the one of the rows which had won at the fair. The children had put up the last Christmas wreath, Opie and Mary Wiggins who'd lost her front teeth, and Andy with no gun adorned his nightcap just in case feuding families finally ended their scrap. When out on the street there came a great noise. Could it be Briscoe, Charlene, and the Darling Boys? It probably wasn't that nut named Bass. It didn't sound one bit like shattering glass. No snow, just a steady rain fell from the sky. It had rained every day since those gypsies came by. When up came a black Ford automobile with way yonder too much grease on the wheel. With a skinny little driver who still had no wife, he was known by such names as Fast Gun Fife. His car barely made it, slowly moving along. A mechanic named Pyle had told him all that was wrong. Needs points, needs plugs, needs new wife by gosh, and she could also really use a good wash. To the Taylor's driveway, he'd park right behind Mr. Tucker's big car, cause he changed his mind. He looked at the house and wished he could fly. Then a ladder next to the house caught his eagle eye. He'd climb up the ladder, yep, that was the plan. It was left there by Wheeler, Aunt B's handyman. He knew how to enter a room with such ease. He taught Ernest T with full amenities. But on this special night, the door would not do, so down the the chimney the thin deputy flew. He was dressed in a uniform. Now what could be dumber? This night I doubt he'd encounter Fred Plummer. His hair floyd had slicked down but not a bit drippy in case fingers ran through from a fun girl named Skippy. His hat held his ticket book just in case the governor's car was parked in the wrong place. The bullet in his pocket was shiny and neat, and if he should use it, watch out for your feet. When he sang, it just kind of made you sick, cause he couldn't sing, not one single lick. Even an old-fashioned recitation didn't work. After all, you can't make a bird go chirp, chirp. He had not an ounce of fat, which helped him hustle. He could eat all the cookies since they all went to muscle. He had little time and might get in a pinch, since a tightwad named Weaver might turn into the Grinch. He spoke not a word. There was much work to do. He still had to call Juanita and say toodaloo. For Opie, he left some shiny new skates and a guitar, the kind that Lydia Crossweight hates. For Aunt V, he left 24 canning jars, more kerosene cucumbers for out-of-state cars. He left his friend Andy a hat and a tie. He'd never wear either, but he still had to try. And when he had finished, he went out the door. He'd saved enough time for just one thing more. To Thelma Lou's house, he now had to go for a pan of her fudge and that doctor show. He cranked up his car on the third or fourth try. On his cycle and sidecar, he could better rely. But I heard him exclaim as he drove through the mud, Merry Christmas to all. Now nip it in the bud. <laughs> ben Sander for us at Paul. Ben Sandifer, that says from him. Thank you, Ben, for letting us play that uh, on the podcast. A great talent these folks have, and I really appreciate it. Now, folks, we have one more big one that's going to be coming up later. Uh, we're going to have Miss Ellie sing Away in the Manger. But before we get to that, I wanted to uh, play this nice note that I got, or we got, from uh, Randy Turner. I just wanted to take this opportunity to wish a Merry Christmas to Alan, Jan, and all of you who listen faithfully to Two Chairs No Waiting. There's a traditional Irish blessing that seems particularly appropriate when it comes to those of us who love The Andy Griffith Show and the morals the show espouses. May you be blessed with the spirit of the season, which is peace, the gladness of the season, which is hope and the heart of the season, which is love. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Randy. Thank you for that. And uh, let's head over now and hear from Randy with This Week in Mayberry History. (laughs) 
Welcome to this week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. Terry Garr's brief appearance in Mayberry is often cut in syndicated versions, but this wonderful actress did appear once during the color years. Terry was born in a Cleveland, Ohio suburb on December the 11th, 1944. Her parents were both involved in entertainment. Her father was a vaudeville comedian and actor who performed on Broadway in four productions between 1933 and shortly before his death in 1956 when Terry was only 11. Eddie Gar also acted in films and television, including his next-to-last appearance in an episode of The Danny Thomas Show. Terry's mother, who had been a dancer with the Rockettes and in modeling, had to struggle to maintain the family, which also included two older brothers of Terry's. Her mother rented out rooms in their house and took in sewing. In the 1960s, she became a wardrobe mistress and costume designer, most notably serving as the designer for the series That Girl. As a child, Terry dreamed of joining the American Ballet Theater and studied ballet extensively. While she eventually gave up ballet, she did continue to dance. The day after she graduated from North Hollywood High School, she became a professional when she joined the chorus of the national tour of West Side Story. She later attended two years of college in California, but then moved to New York City. She danced in the choruses of various shows at night while studying acting at the Actor Studio and at the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute during the day. At the same time, she would occasionally commute back to Hollywood, usually to dance in films. Her 1963 film debut was as an extra in A Swingin' Affair, which was followed by dancing in numerous Elvis films, beginning with Fun in Acapulco in 1964, followed by Viva Las Vegas, Kissin' Cousins, and Roustabout. She also made her television debut in 1964 in an episode of Mr. Novak. Terry continued to act in film and television, appearing in Dr. Kildare, Batman, and in 1967, dancing in yet another Elvis movie, Clambake. The following year, in only her fourth television appearance, Terry appeared in Mayberry near the end of the series as an attractive, unnamed girl in a red convertible who pulled up at Wally's service station. In the episode, Howard tried out the life of a swinging bachelor after his domineering mother married and moved to Mount Pilot. As Terry's character brushed her hair while waiting for gas, Goober blurted out an invitation to go with him to a party Howard was throwing, but she ignored him. Later that year, Terry got her first big break in television, co-starring in an episode of Star Trek that was supposed to be a backdoor pilot, though a resultant series never materialized. Later the same year, Terry had another small role midway through the first season of Mayberry RFD, and finally got to speak in a film in the Monkees movie, Head, written by Jack Nicholson. In the early 1970s, Terry was a regular cast member in Ken Berry's summer replacement series, The Ken Berry Wow Show, and was a regular in the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour, both dancing and appearing in comedy sketches. She had recurring roles in McLeod and The Girl with Something Extra. After playing a supporting role in Francis Ford Coppola's 1974 film, The Conversation, Terry's breakout film role was the same year as the good doctor's assistant, Inga, in Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein. That was followed by a string of hit films, including Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Oh God, and The Black Stallion. Terry received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in the 1982 hit, Tootsie. Thanks to her quick wit, Terry became a popular repeat guest on The Late Night with David Letterman and appeared often on Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. She hosted Saturday Night Live three times in the early 80s. 
While she continued to be a busy actress in film and television, she also began appearing frequently in off-Broadway and theater productions on both coasts. Terry's career slowed in the mid-1990s when she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She went public with the diagnosis in 2002 and has served as a spokesperson for organizations battling the disease. She retired from acting in 2011. Terry is considered a comic legend and has been cited as a major influence by current performers such as Tina Fey and Jenna Fisher. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Thank you, Randy. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of the great stuff that Randy's doing on the internet, send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com, turnersgrade at gmail.com, and he'll make sure you don't miss out on anything. So that's great. Had one other special uh, kind of call in. Let's, uh, let's hear from this one. You guys may recognize this person. Well, the happy holiday season's with us again. And I think it certainly is a wonderful thing that this station is playing so much of that nice Christmas music. This is Andy Griffith, and if I may, I'd like to join in with all the folks here in wishing you and your family the very fondest and Christmas greetings, and a sincere wish that the new year brings you all you hope for. Well, thank you, Andy. Uh, wow, that's a real treat. So, folks, I hope you have enjoyed the episode tonight, and we're going to end the show uh, different than normal. We're going to end it uh, with Miss Ellie singing us out uh, with a way in a manger. So until next time, we'll see you back here on the podcast, folks. I'd like to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415, or you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. If you can't remember, just head over to two chairs, no waiting.com and the information is there. You'll be able to get in touch with me. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being here. Merry Christmas and happy new year. Have a safe day time of traveling and being with your family and enjoy miss ellie we'll see you next time right here on two chairs Remember? lay down his sweet head the stars in the sky look down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the hay the cattle are lowing the poor baby wakes but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. Jesus lay down his sweet head The stars in the sky look down where he lay The little Lord Jesus asleep on